I'm really pleased uh, to be joined once again by uh, investigative journalist Asa Wynne Stanley. Um, thank you for coming on, Asa. Yeah, of course. Now, uh, we've got a story that you've written uh, last week in uh, Electronic Intifada, which is uh, this one here. Labour's new bankroller is Israel lobbyist, South African apartheid profiteer. profiteer. Now, I, obviously, Labour's declined uh, in in its membership, seen the decline in its membership and 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 subscriptions and money coming in from members, and also unions have, have, have taken money away. So it's good that Labour's got more money coming in. Can you tell us a bit about this this new money that Labour are, are, are benefiting from and who it's from? <laughs> the Financial Times reported uh, earlier this month that um, a multi-millionaire named Gary Lubner would be donating £5 million to the Labour Party between now and the next general election campaign. And they did this interview with Lubner, and it's kind of a puff piece about it. Um, but they didn't mention the fact that Gary Lubner is also a long-term donor to the Israel lobby. So like a lot of um, Starmer's financial supporters, he's an Israel lobby financier. And also what I found really interesting as well with this one was that um, he, it turns out his company, um, he's from South Africa, Gary Lubner, he's, he's a South African, and the company that he ran for many years during the apartheid era in South Africa was a profiteer from South African apartheid. Um, and uh, yeah, I get into the details of it in the story and... Uh, it was quite a shocking story, really. And this was something that um, Andrew Feinstein, who um, I'm sure you've had on the show before, yeah. um, actually alerted me to the, the fact of um, the Lubna family, family firm, because it was a family firm, um, busted the sanctions during the apartheid regime. So it's an interesting one. I, I mean, I found that shocking. Some of the stuff that you've got on that article um uh the 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 donations to the the apartheid part the national party in south africa during apartheid i mean actually bolstering them not actually not taking a quiet back seat but actually supporting them actively funding them i mean that's yeah. quite different to turning a blind eye isn't it yeah absolutely so this was um Bertie and Ronnie Lubner. So Bertie Lubner, they both passed away now, but Bertie Lubner and Ronnie Lubner ran this firm together in South Africa called PG Glass. It, it started off as um, wind, replacing wind, windscreens in cars, and then it expanded out to construction and all kinds of things. And, and until, you know, by the mid 2010s, it was doing billions in sales around the world. Bertie Lubner and Ronnie Lubner ran this firm together uh, it had been their father's firm before him, before them. They ran it together. Um, and Ronnie Lubner's son is Gary Lubner. So it, this is not a, a question of, you know, blaming um, the son for the father and the uncle's politics. No, that's not it at all. Gary Lubner actually worked for, for this company. You know, he was an accountant for this firm throughout the 1980s at the height of this company's sanctions busting period. And so what it was it was really interesting. So Bertie Lubner and Ronnie Lubner, Gary Lubner's uncle and father, respectively, and also his bosses in the company, um, they personally attended in the early 1980s uh, a dinner with the prime minister of apartheid South Africa, P.W. Bota, who, as I note in, in the article, you know, really was one of the architect. His party was the architect of apartheid South Africa, of apart the apartheid regime in South Africa. And actually, P. W. Belter himself was during the Second World War as a young National Party activist was a Nazi. He was actually an actual South African Nazi. Um, there was a there was a Nazi group in South Africa whose um, whose name I can't pronounce, but it's written in the article. Um, who were sympathisers with you know? There's not a question of being neo Nazis. After the fact, they were actually sympathizers with um, Hitler's regime because oh. you know the white supremacy of um, the white supremacy that ruled South Africa in in that period 
had similarities with it. He later distanced himself from that. Um, but nonetheless, he, there was no question of the, that he ran a white supremacist regime in South Africa. And despite that, you have Bertie and Ronnie Lubna, who the, the co-chairman of this company, PG Group, uh, making, as you mentioned, making personal donation to PW Botas political party, the National Party. Um, and, you know, this was, and it's there, you can see the letter in the article. Yeah, I mean, look, I'll just, I'll just share the, the letter on the screen. Uh, because, um, you know, it, this is from Bertie, um, the uncle of Gary uh, Lubna, who, as you say, was an accountant in the firm. So he, 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 wasn't, he wasn't totally unaware of all this stuff. Um, if you see that paragraph there, we would like to take the opportunity of paying a special tribute to you and for your outstanding leadership of this country, which we hold so dear and to wish you continuing success with the very dramatic part that you have now undertaken to ensure a better future for all sectors of the population. Uh, mm. yeah. All sectors of the population, I, I don't think that's quite right, do you? Really sycophantic, and yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I don't believe that you, it has, he can't have made any statement disowning his uncle and father, can he? No, he hasn't at all, and this is the interesting thing, so he did, I, you know, I, I sent emails to all his um, charities. He's involved in all these different charities. Um, and uh, Gary Lubna. And so I sent emails requesting comment to all of these charities and trying to, you know, get hold of him. And in the end, he, you know, and I, I, I outlined in those emails, it was the same email basically sent to different places, um, in great depth, what I was writing in the article. So I put everything in the article to him and he didn't respond in any detail. It's just basically a blanket denial saying, I mean, you can see his full response in my article, but he's, it's just a blanket denial saying these allegations are wholly inaccurate. Um, and that Gary has a long history of opposing apartheid and working with progressive organizations. Uh, he and his family. Now this is the important point of his response, I would say. He and his family worked very closely with their friend Nelson Mandela to help bring about lasting change in South Africa. Now that's interesting because not only is he um, whitewashing his own role in all of this and not commenting on it, all these documented facts, he's whitewashing the role of his, of his uncle and his father who are very well documented as playing this important role in busting the sanctions in South Africa, you know. So that letter was, is part of it, where this came, to put a bit, a, a, a bit in historical context, this, the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, it was a time when the white supremacist regime in South Africa was, was feeling some international pressure from some countries um, to, 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 to end the apartheid regime. And so the response of the, the National Party, led by P.W. Bota, was to... Um, basically fight back in, in, a, in some ways quite a similar way to what the modern apartheid state of Israel is doing now fighting back against Palestine solidarity. Um, they were, the, the white supremacist was, regime was feeling quite sorry for itself and they were feeling quite embattled and so they enlisted all to fight back against this what they claim was an all-out assault they en wanted to enlist all sectors of the South African settler society um, in order to um, fight back against it, fight back against this um, liberation struggle. And so that involved getting um, business on board. And that's the role that Bertie and Ronnie Lubna were playing. And they did that, you know, they, um, they, it, they played, you know, it's quite well documented in South Africa. They played this role in busting the sanctions and they, um, Bertie and Ronnie offered $15 million to start a, a lobby group in Washington, D.C., in order to fight back against what they claim were the lies of the anti-apartheid movement. So it's very, you know, and I, I, I quote a very good South African journalist in my article, um, Henny Van Vuren, who says that, you know, his view is that it's very easy now for Gary Lubna to try and sort of defend himself and say, well, you know, my friend Nelson Mandela, um, and we, you know, we acted against um, apartheid, but what did he actually do? Well, if you look at what he was actually doing, his company that he was working for and that he became ultimately became a multi-millionaire off of was playing this really terrible role in helping to perpetuate the apartheid regime and enriching themselves with it at the same time. 
And so, you know, it's um, it's kind of fitting that this this person, Gary Lubner, would be a donor to the modern Labour Party because the modern Labour Party has made itself and its support for the modern apartheid state of Israel are just a really key platform of what it's doing. You know, it was Keir Starmer who infamously used the phrase during his campaign to become leader of the Labour Party that he was a supporter of Zionism without qualification. They've made this the emblematic issue because you know they want to they want to bury the the Corbynite past. I mean, the, the, I, I was watching a documentary this week about Olaf Palmer, the Swedish prime minister, and how there were links with South Africa and his assassination. I mean, it seems like those kind of um, secret services and 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 fighting against uh, sanctions and all that kind of thing it's quite dark um, yeah. and we don't ever get to the truth of it and obviously yeah. if someone has been behind apartheid in south africa they're not going to come out and say it now are they because no it's it's no. seen as one of the worst things you could possibly do but i i just want to move on just finally to, to the part that you in your article where you talk about um gary lubner's son Jack Lubner, uh, there's a picture of him. Um, what what role is he playing? What's what's he up to? You've got some in interesting stuff about him. Yeah, so his father Gary, as I mentioned in the article, is a, a long term supporter of uh, an Israel lobby group called the United Jewish Israel Appeal, which is actually closely tied to the state of Israel itself. It's um, it's considered a key fundraising arm for the state of Israel uh, uh, for its global lobby campaign. And it does things like organize trips to uh, propaganda trips to Israel for um, youth, often Jewish youth, to, um, you know, to prepare them ultimately to become, uh, in some cases, settlers in Palestine, in occupied Palestine. Um, but certainly to be global, what they would um, call global ambassadors for Israel in the West. Um, and uh, this is something that Gary Lubner has been donating to for years. Um, he almost certainly donates to a lot of other Israel lobby groups that we don't know about. I would suspect, and I don't know this, but I would suspect that he is probably a donor to the Jewish labor movement and labor friends of Israel. Can't say that for sure, don't know, because those groups are completely opaque in their funding. Uh, but it's a reasonable supposition nonetheless, um, especially as he's, you know, going to be doling out five million pounds to the Labour Party. Um, and his son, uh, Jack Lubner, his youngest son, uh, you know, he's actually mentioned in this um, Financial Times interview. And, you know, there's this claim in the interview that he was um, attacked by anti-Semites in the Labour Party. And it was great that Keir Starmer got rid of them all. But what you know what this actually means is that the left was driven out of the Labour Party and they're critical of Israel. You know, it's this kind of weaponized anti semitic form of weaponized anti-Semitism that we're all unfortunately so familiar with. Um, and Jack Lubner, you know, he's 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 like his father in a lot of ways. Um, he uh, is a campaigner for Israel, you know, so he's part of the Jewish Labour Movement, pro-Israel group. Um, he's part of Yachad, a liberal Zionist organization and the Union of Jewish Students, which is actually, as my reporting has shown in the past, and you, and you can read about it in my book as well, is that um, the, the Union of Jewish Students is actually funded by the Israeli embassy itself. Um, and um, Jack Lubner is, is an anti-BDS campaigner. You know, he, he, he claims to be sort of this, um, so he's, he's one of these kind of liberal Zionists who will say, well, we support a two-state solution and and nice things like that. But when it actually comes down to the nitty gritty, they oppose Palestinian rights. They oppose campaigning for Palestinian equality, like the BDS movement boycott, divestment sanctions against Israeli apartheid, actually holding Israel to accountable. They actively campaign against the BDS movement. Um, and uh, Jack Lubner was one of the key activists who were working to smear low key, the uh, British Iraqi rapper and campaigner and scholar, um, uh, you know, he's been working to get him cancelled in public spaces and um, in uh, student spaces and activist spaces um, with um, some limited amount of success, it has to be said, unfortunately. Um, and so, you know, 
this is somebody who, um, yeah, you know, sons can have different politics from their fathers. There's no doubt about it, but it doesn't seem to be the case in this case. Mm. Right. Well, it, it's it's an amazing story. I, I, I think everyone should uh, try and look it up on uh, electronic intifada. And um, just want to say before before we go that I see a copy of your book behind your head, uh, weaponizing anti-Semitism. I believe that that book is doing quite well in the sales charts. Is there any, uh, I mean, for a book that's not publicized that much and that you haven't got a big uh, publishing house, uh, can you tell us how, how well it's going and what your hopes are for it? Yeah, it's doing all right. You know, um, it is, I was just posting today uh, about how it is it has now cracked the top 1000 on amazon uk and it is number one in middle east books on amazon uk as well so you know i i think you know and it's nice to see that it's also uh beating david Badil in um one of amazon sectional charts for the moment as well so that's great you know i mean obviously you know it david Badil's book has been out for more than a year and it had it it's it's been in every main newspaper and it's been on TV. He had a documentary. It's never gonna, you know, it, it's um, it's not gonna have. My book doesn't have that kind of institutional support. Um, it, it's had absolutely no mainstream media coverage whatsoever. Um, you know, it's um, intrepid uh, left wing reporters such as yourself, Crispin, who have been helping me to publicize it and talking about the book and engaging with the book. And um, there's a lot of, there's, it's, it's really gratifying to see that people are talking about the book and that um, I've had people telling me they've put it into their local libraries as well. So that's, that's really nice to hear. Um, and um, I think it's doing well. I think it's publishing above its, it's pub punching above its weight and um, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens with it. And um, I'm optimistic and, you know, it's a small, um, small independent publisher and they seem very happy with it. So um, we'll see where it goes. I'll be doing, going on tour around the country. Um, so there's a couple of dates settled so far. Um, now I'll be doing book signings and talks about the book and uh, it'll be nice to talk to people and see people on that.